Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Pointy Not Sharp. Today we're taking a look at a US M5A1 bayonet for the M1 Garand. Now this version, this uh, example we have here is actually Korean. Uh, the scabbard is uh, US, so you know, partially correct. But um, these bayonets were made by a number of different countries. And uh, there's quite a few different variations out there. But um, yeah, this one's Korean. Now, the US made uh, three different versions of this. They had the, uh, the M5, the M5-1 and the M5-A1. Uh, this is pretty much an M5-A1 here, but obviously the Korean version of one or two slight differences. Now, the US ones were made by um, a couple of different countries. They're made by uh, Aerial Cut uh, Cutlery Company, uh, Columbus uh, Millpar and Manufacturing Company, the Imperial Knife Company, the Jones and Dickinson Tool Company, and uh, Utica cut, uh, Cutlery. Now, the other versions of this that were made, uh, this one is uh, Korean. I don't know who manufactured these, but the Yanks supplied the Koreans with a stack of M1 Garands without bayonets, so they had to make their own. And um, they didn't do too badly. The quality's not quite up to the same, same standard as what you find in the uh, US ones. And um, the plastic in the grips is a bit thinner. Other than that, they're pretty much the same. The Danes also got a few. Uh, theirs were called the uh, the M62 because they got it in 1962, so a model of 1962, go figure. And they were made in Germany by uh, ENF uh, Horster and uh, Karl Eken Waffen Fabrics. Um, and uh, theirs have quite a unique scabbard and uh, look, and I tried to get one for this video, but unfortunately I wasn't able to get my hands on it. It's a shame, I really wanted to uh, get that one. Uh, the Turks also copied these, uh, there's a Oh, they're, they're absolute crap. They're up to the same standards as the rest of their stuff was back then. And uh, they also sort of um, fabricated other bayonets into this similar kind of um, pattern. Again, it, absolute crap. But um, we'll get into those in a minute. So the M5A1 bayonet, or originally the M5, was made for the M1 Grand in 1953. Now... That's obviously in uh, the middle of the Korean War, and that was in response to uh, issues that uh, US soldiers were having with their existing M1 uh, bayonets. So the M1 obviously being what the Yanks used in World War II, uh, very well liked, very, very iconic. Uh, you see it in all the movies. Uh, however, the issue with that is uh, wearing big uh, mittens in the cold weather in Korea, because uh, it snows there in the winter and gets quite chilly. Uh, soldiers weren't able to get their bayonets out of their scabbards. So um, with the M1s, you have to depress your button to disconnect uh, two locking lugs that go into the scabbard. And when you're wearing giant mittens, soldiers weren't able to do that. So they weren't able to use their bayonets. Even as a combat knife or a utility knife, they were struggling. And there were a lot of complaints about it. So as a result, um, these were designed in 53, manufacturing started immediately and they started pumping them out uh, quick smart as the uh, M5 bayonet. So I'll pull it out, we'll have a look. As you can see, it's modeled after the M4 bayonet, which I believe itself was modeled after the M3 fighting knife. So very, very uh, iconic and popular design or blade profile. Um, it went on to be copied with the M6 and the M7, um, both fantastic bayonets. I'm trying to get an M6 at the moment. Um, yeah, so what I might do actually is I'll run you through the, uh, the construction of the blade quickly, then we'll go over the markings, and then I'll explain uh, the different countries and their versions and uh, the differences. and. Right at the end of the video, I'll pull it apart and I'll show you the difference between the M5, the M5A1, and what I've been told is the difference with the M5-1, but um, I can't confirm that 100%. So as you can see, we've got the M4 um, style blade, so sharpened on one side and um, false edge going about 40% down the blade. Uh, it's actually surprisingly sharp. I was expecting this bayonet to be junk, but it's really, really grown on me. Just looking at it, you don't expect anything great, but um, this is a really, really handy little uh, fighting knife and bayonet, and it's uh, yeah, it's really grown on me. Anyway, the uh, key and I might have noticed on the cross guard we have no muzzle ring, and how can this be a bayonet without a muzzle ring? We have a little nub here, which um, 
slots into the gas block on M1 Grand that snaps in. So you don't need a uh, you don't need a big bulky uh, muzzle ring. Then we've just got uh, plastic grips. So this being the Korean version, the grips are a bit thinner and a bit flimsier, but feels pretty solid. I've got no complaints. And then we've got a push button here for connecting to the rifle. And what that does is when you press that, we've got a lever inside the, the grip here that uh, pivots on a pin in the center here. So when you push this up, that side gets pushed down and there's a little uh, catch in here that gets pulled down when you press this button and disconnects from the rifle. I'll pull the grips apart at the end of the video and I'll show you how it works. They're moving down, we've got the pommel, nice big deep Mortise, and yeah, nothing too special down there. In terms of the scabbard, it's just a classic uh, M8A1 scabbard. This is a US scabbard. So it's fiberglass body, um, metal cap at either end. Most of them don't have this metal cap down this end. So I believe this is one of the earlier ones from what I've been told. If I'm wrong, please correct me. And uh, yeah, classic US Y hanger. Now, if this was one of the Danish uh, M62s, uh, it'd be very, very obvious because the scabbards have like a, a wooden look. So while they're not made of wood, they're made of like a plastic or a resin mold or something like that. They have the appearance of wood and they, they look really, really good. I really, really want one, but uh, I haven't been lucky enough so far to get one. I nearly got one recently, it was close, but just slipped through my fingers on eBay. Uh, and the blades on uh, the M62s, they, they're not as dark, they have like a, a bluey grey look about them and they sort of um, sheen a little bit in the right light. I think they look fantastic. Uh, anyway, I'll stop drilling over those, which I don't have, and I'll, I'll move on. Uh, the Turkish bayonets, they have a aluminium grip. Uh, there's not many of them, they sort of popped up in the States like in the last 20 years. So when the, um, the Yanks sold an absolute buttload, or I think they gave a shitload of... Um, M1 Garands to the Turks in 53. Uh, they didn't give them with uh, bayonets from what I've been told, so they had to manufacture their own. So the quality of Turk-made stuff back then was absolute rubbish. And um, they made a stack. They have aluminium grips. The blades are shit. Um, they're a bit wobbly. The scabbards are steel. And they'll have a, a crescent moon and a couple other stamps on them. Uh, but yeah, very, very low quality. They're a bit rare because there's not many of them out there. And uh, they're a bit collectible too, so I want to get my hands on one. The other thing the Turks did was they modified existing Mauser bayonets uh, into this sort of configuration. And uh, they're, they're absolutely shit. <laughs> they're even worse again. Uh, they call them like the uh, the Eretz bayonet, but they're just um, blades that are nowhere near this, this shape, just beaten into the right shape with a hammer. And they're just really, really ugly. And I want one of those as well. I shouldn't, but I do. <laughs> Anyway, um, I'll jump into the markings. So this is obviously a Korean one. The uh, US ones will have uh, whichever version it is, like you know, M5, M5-1, M5-A1, and then the reverse, the manufacturer. Now, this one here is Korean, so I'll show you the markings we have here. This is a M5-A1, as all the Koreans were. And you know it's Korean, because it's got the prefix letter K, so K-M5-A1, and it's got that little almost like a circle with a line through it or an eight. I've heard people describing it as, focus please. There you go. And then on the reverse, manufacturer's markings, DYW, I'm not certain who that is. Um, if you know, comment below. And then over here, we've got US M8A1 and BIZ. BIZ is a pretty common US manufacturer of these style of um, scabbards uh if this was turkish as i said you have the crescent moon on there as well as another marking i'm not sure where you'd find the bayonet i haven't found any photos and if it was danish it'd be marked uh htc i think it is uh that's not a manufacturer that's a um like an acceptance code or something like that i can't remember what it stands for it's in german or danish or something it's sort of like you know government acceptance or Something similar. Um, I saw it online a couple of hours ago, but I've forgotten what it stood for. Sorry about that. So yeah. Um, so what I might do is I might take this one apart 
and I'll explain the differences between the M5, M5-1 and M5A1. Uh, so if you have one of these three, hopefully we can uh, shed some light on what those subtle differences are for you. So just flathead screws, top and bottom. One. two they just pop right off now you can see that mechanism I was talking about before this is our long uh, bar here that's our pivot point and we depress the button here the bar on the other end drops so I'll see if I can show you the internals when I depress the button you can see that little lever dropping and that's what's going to release the bayonet from the rifle, or it's what's going to click it in place. So it's got the slope on one end, rifle will slide on, depress it, and then it'll click into place. And then to remove it from the rifle, depress the button, slide it off. Straightforward. Now, the differences between the M5 and uh, M5-1 and M5-A1. I'll uh, start with the M5-A1, what we have here, and backtrack with the, uh, the minor modifications. So the original M5 uh, had a smaller button and uh, this little pin here, so there's a little hole here, which you can see is an oval hole with a pin in the middle, was a circular uh, hole with a pin in the middle. And there were some issues with the rotating it. It was getting stuck, it was wearing, it wasn't very strong or something similar. So um, when they converted it across to the um, M5A1, that's the modification that they made. And that's the, uh, the reason that's called the M5A1. My understanding for the M5-1 is it still has the circle instead of the oval. However, this button is a bit bigger, so, well, the same size as what we have here, where the M5 has a slightly smaller button, and it was made a little bit bigger and a little bit more pronounced, so it could be uh, used more effectively when wearing mittens. So I can't confirm that bit. Uh, the source wasn't the best, but I can definitely confirm uh, the M5-A1 having that oval hole as uh, the reason for the, the modification. Anyway, guys, um, if I can get my hands on the others, like the Danish or the Turks, um, I'll, uh, I'll do a quick video just showing you uh, what they look like. Um, oh, there, there were some more made actually in 85 and 86. Uh, who was it? It was one of the German companies. I think it was A. Econ in Solingen. They had a contract with Heidi. Or Haiti, how you pronounce it, African nation. Now, the versions they made had like a really plum uh, blue. So like sort of a, a ready plum color blade. There weren't too many of those made. Now, they sent the first few straight over to uh, the purchaser. But then the, uh, the order got cancelled for various political reasons. And the rest got sold commercially on the commercial market. So you do see them floating around. If you see one with a, a plum red blade... Uh, that's what you found. Uh, let me know. I want one. <laughs> anyway, guys, uh, thanks for watching. If I've made any um, blatant errors or mistakes, which I probably have, uh, please comment below. Send me a message. I'll update the description. Other than that, thanks for watching. Have a good day.